Hey guys, this is Matt Core from controlpaint.com, and I wanted to talk a little bit more about the clone stamp tool today. If you watched the previous video, I got into the kind of core functionality, but today we're gonna look at just a couple advanced features that I think make it even more powerful. The first is one that I'm kind of on the fence about. This is a relatively new addition to the software, and it's a panel called the clone source. So what this gives us is sort of like five little clipboards. And remember, the way the clone stamp works is that you pick a source of the canvas, I'll say like this little shadow area here, and then it allows me to paint elsewhere with it. Well, what I can do is I can say, okay, put me in slot one, and I'll make that the blue shadow area. Now put me in slot two, and I want some red roof. And then for slot three, I'll do some of this uh, illuminated wall. So I've got blue, red, and then white. Now what that means is I can go somewhere else and say, okay, I want blue. So I'm gonna to go to my blue slot, paint a little of that, and then I'm gonna to go to my red slot, paint a little red, and then I'm gonna to go to my white slot and have a little white to paint with. So what this does is it gives you five little slots that will sort of store those sources temporarily. I find this could be very powerful depending on how you work. It certainly allows you to sample sources less often. It also allows you to kind of zoom in real close to where you're working, even if the source you wanted was maybe way over here. I don't know what image you're working with, but it's a possible scenario. So in that case, the clone source panel really beefs up this tool. It really gives you a lot more options. For me personally, I don't actually use it because I tend to kind of keep a little further zoomed out so I can sample from all over my image anyway. But I encourage you to definitely try out Clone Source. Okay, so we'll close that for a minute. Now I want to talk about a tool pair. So for me, the tool pair that I like is, we'll have the Clone Stamp, and I'm gonna paint some, you know, some extra roof here. And then if I painted too much, as I often do, I'll switch to the eraser. So I could hit the E key to switch to the eraser, get rid of some of it, you know, kind of shape it a little bit, and then go back to the clone stamp, sample again, and keep working. Okay, so that's the general thing. This is gonna sound very familiar if you know how I use temp layers, but where I go one extra step with this is I actually stay with the clone stamp tool selected. So I'm always selecting the clone stamp tool, but then using what they call spring-loaded keys, I will hold down E, to temporarily switch to the eraser so I can kind of carve away what I don't want. And then as soon as I let go of E, it switches right back to the clone stamp. So this allows you to kind of mainly in your mind clone stamp. You're, you're thinking about selecting an area and painting with that area, but then every so often you want to get rid of a little. So you just hold down E, sculpt a little away with that eraser, and then let go, and bam, you're right back to cloning again. And in my mind, what this allows you to do is to just expand the way that the clone stamp feels in your mind. It's this little sculpting, and then snap, you're right back. And then you're painting again with the source. It's a subtle thing, and it's certainly not a game changer, but for me, it really just makes the tool feel more powerful. I feel like I can just get more out of it, and it's only two buttons. And remember, you're painting on individual layers, so all these rooftops I've made here are just on a single layer. So now I can actually paint below it if I wanted to put in like this, this sort of cast shadows that they'd make, and I can do that by selecting some of the blue area over here. So I'll go back to my clone stamp tool, select the shadowed area, and then start to paint that in. And once again, whenever I need to erase, I just temporarily hold down E, erase away a little bit, and then I let go, and I'm back to my clone stamping. So hopefully you can see how absolutely powerful this might be. It takes some getting used to, it definitely is different than traditional painting, but isn't that interesting? It uses other areas of my finished canvas to allow me to put down more pigment. I'm using this more and more the longer I spend with Photoshop, so 
even if it seems foreign to you, go check it out. I think the clone stamp has a lot of possibility. Thanks for coming to the site, guys.